everyone! So today I'm here to do a video that I did last year and I just thought it was fun and cozy and Christmassy. Basically, as you can see, <laughs> I have a whole bunch of Christmas presents to wrap. And uh, so I'm just gonna sit here and chat with you guys while I wrap Christmas presents. I'm gonna show you guys the Christmas presents that I bought people. So if you're my mom, if you're my dad, Carl, or Nico, yeah, I think that's basically it. Um, leave, because <laughs> I'm going to be showing you guys their presents. And um, yeah, basically I'm just going to sit here, wrap some presents, ask for some questions and like discussion topics, and we're just going to chat. It's going to be a nice, cozy little time. So yeah, I have already wrapped a couple of gifts. These are for Haley. I have to like mail these, so I already wrapped these um, the other day because I thought I was going to be able to go to the post office a little bit earlier, but I didn't. So those are the first ones that are wrapped. But I have this nice wrapping paper, just silver and red, and I don't have any tags. We're just going to write people's names on it with a purple marker. <laughs> so anyways, um, I think I'm going to start with a bunch of Scooby presents. Scooby is our puppy. Well, he's not a puppy. <laughs> I've gotten asked so many questions about this dog. Um, basically, Scooby was a relative's dog who he couldn't take, they couldn't take care of him anymore. And so we took him in and adopted him. And he is five years old. <laughs> and yeah, it's so funny. All Everyone bought Scooby clothes for Christmas. So he has so many clothes. It's kind of ridiculous. I have four here. And literally, um, his old owner sent us a bunch of presents for him, um, and we opened a couple of things already. So he's already gotten like three new shirts and like sweaters and jackets, and I still have four more to wrap. <laughs> so this is what we're going to start out with. And the first question I'm going to answer, we're going to kind of go in like no particular order probably, but someone asked me, um, how excited are you for the new Sun Yu comeback, and what groups do you stand now? I literally just finished filming my Sun Yu reaction video, um, so that will definitely be up way before this video. So um, you guys probably already know, but I loved it. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this comeback. It was so, so good. It was both very Sun Yu and also very new. I feel like he really grew a lot and like tried to go for some different sounds, which I personally really appreciate. I always liked, um, new sounds from people, um, although Sung Yoo could literally have made the same music for the rest of his life and I would also be happy with that, but um, I do love um, the new kind of sound he's going for, I think it's great, and I loved it, I loved it so much, um, I'm Cold is definitely going to be on repeat for the rest of my life, and um, I also loved Climax and um, Dive In. I honestly love the whole album. I also loved Room. Um, the only one I wasn't like crazy about was Fade, but god, what groups do I stand now? Honestly, I had a very big drop in groups this year, I feel like. I feel like I'm honestly just a little bit sick of the K-pop industry slash the K-pop fandom in general, um, so I just kind of got really sick of some stuff and dropped a lot of groups to be honest this year. Like I used to stand ATs who I dropped and also I've talked a little bit about it online but I unstand SM basically as an entire company which is sad because I definitely really liked a lot of SM groups. I was a big fan of NCT obviously um, and also EXO, Red Velvet, big fan of SHINee. Basically I liked all of their groups but SM as a company I just can't support <laughs> anymore with my money or my views because if you guys somehow didn't hear about this, they are working with a company that is like directly funding the genocide of Muslims in India. And for me, morally, I just couldn't look past that for some music. So I decided to unstand SM. So that was like a bunch of groups taken off of my list of people that I enjoyed. So at the moment, I would say that my groups are infinite. Astro and Flying, who I got into this year, and I'm absolutely in love with them. I think they're so great. They're one of the bands, like that they, they actually play instruments and stuff. Um, and I absolutely adore them and their music. So big fan of them, and also Itzy and Twice. Obviously, Twice is like my ultimate girl group. Um, and I got into their little sister group, which is Itzy, who I am obsessed with. I love Itzy 
so freaking much. Um, it honestly reminds me of like my obsession with Twice when I first got into Twice. So um, I bias Leah, if you were wondering, in Itzy. All of my bias is in groups. In Astro, I bias Jinu. In Infinite, I obviously bias on you. He's my ultimate bias. <laughs> in M Flying, I bias Hoon, and then in Itzy, I bias Leah, and in Twice, I bias Dahyun. Um, so I'd say those are really my core groups at the moment, um, which honestly I'm fine with. I feel a little bit like, I don't know, I, was, I think I was getting a little overwhelmed with how many groups I like, especially because in the K-pop fandom, if you like more than one group, it just means that everyone's gonna fight all the time with their stupid ass fan wars. So, um, I feel like I like a lot of low-key kind of fandoms and groups, like Infinite and Flying and Astro's fandoms are very low-key and quiet. It's honestly quite nice, I quite like it. I feel like after unstanding SM groups, like the amount of fan wars and fan Fans being annoying that I saw drastically decreased. The next questions were, uh, someone asked which Animal Crossing character are you? And also someone asked what are my favorite Animal Crossing villagers? So I'm just gonna answer both of them. <laughs> my favorite Animal Crossing villagers. I feel like I have a very popular one and a very unpopular one. Cause I think I have two. I have like a boy and a girl one. Um, my favorite Animal Crossing villager since I was a kid was Kiki because she was the first ever villager I had back on the GameCube version of the game. And I was obsessed with her. Kiki is a black cat, if you don't play the game. Um, she's a very, very simple villager. She's one of the OGs. Again, she was in the Animal Crossing um, for GameCube. And she's very, very low key. And I kind of hate it because everyone got her for Halloween. And then just immediately got rid of her. And I was like, oh my god, I've had her like since the beginning of my island because she was the only person I wanted, like only villager I like really wanted. So I went out of my way to get her. So I, yeah, I felt I was kind of upset that everyone just got rid of her the second Halloween was over. I get it. She's a good Halloween villager because she's a black cat, but she's so cute and so good. And I feel like I honestly identify with Kiki. Um, she is a normal or sweet female villager and um, she, her hobby is education. So all she does is like walk around talking about books and being adorable. So I feel like I identify quite a lot with her. I do think my personality would probably be a sisterly villager, but also the sisterly villagers aren't great. So I don't know. <laughs> But Kiki is definitely my all-time favorite villager, um, but a very recent one, kind of unpopular one, because I literally have never seen anyone else talk about him, like, ever, because I think everyone really likes, for a cranky villager, everyone really likes Dobie, but I am obsessed with Lobo. He's another of the wolf villagers, and I just think he's so freaking cute. I honestly would, like, maybe say that Cranky villagers are my favorite personality type. I just think they're so freaking cute and so adorable. They're so grumpy and angry. <laughs> and I just think they're so cute. Also, I'm wrapping my mom's gift next. I got her this wallet because she's been needing a new wallet. It's like one of those gigantic like mom wallets. I thought this one was just really, really cute and maybe it would keep her more organized. <laughs> but yeah, I got Lobo like very much by chance. Um, I got him as a campsite villager and I just took him kind of on like not really thinking too much about it and I love him again he's like my favorite villager at the moment like if I didn't if I wasn't super loyal to Kiki <laughs> I would say that he was my favorite villager I think he's just so pure because he is a grumpy villager with an education hobby so he it's just like, he's such a, like, a grandfather. Um, he just, like, sits around with his, he puts on his little glasses and he reads. And he always, like, weirdly gives the best gifts. I don't know if anyone else has noticed, like, that they have a pattern with their villagers and the types of gifts that they give. I find that almost all of my villagers give absolutely crap gifts. Like, I'll give them, like, something that was, like, you know, a couple thousand bells or whatever or that, like, is actually really cute, and they will give me a rugby uniform. <laughs> um, but Lobo gives me such cute gifts. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's, like, he's like a shopper. So, um, I don't know, I've, I've really, really fell in love with Lobo recently. So I'd say Kiki and Lobo. 
are my two favorite villagers at the moment. Like my favorite female and my favorite male villager. Someone asked my favorite K-dramas. I'm thinking of doing a video on this because I am watching so many more K-dramas. If you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me there if you want to hear about K-dramas because I've been giving like little mini um, Instagram story reviews of them. Um, when I finish them and as I watch them and stuff. Um, I just recently finished My Shy Boss, which I unfortunately did not like nearly as much as I was hoping I was going to. Um, it just was a little bit boring. <laughs> if I'm gonna it, it was just too long. Like, all K-dramas seem to, like, have to be 16 episodes or more, and, um, this one could have been, like, 10 max. <laughs> oh, also, the next thing I'm gonna be wrapping is this, which is for Nico. This is a book. I'm trying not to talk too loud because he's in another room, but <laughs> I got him this because he's obsessed. Yeah, so I'd say my favorite K-drama, I always have a very tough time saying this because I have a lot of like K-dramas, like favorite K-dramas because they're in different genres, you know what I mean? Like I have a favorite historical K-drama, which is 100 Days My Prince starring Ko Do Kyung Soo. It was absolutely the best historical drama out there. I've watched so many because I love historical dramas. But 100 Days My Prince was definitely the best one. And then, like, for kind of, like, a fantasy-ish one, I absolutely love Goblin. Like, I watched Goblin. I watched the last episode of Goblin, like, seven times. Um, every time my friends, I got my friends to watch that K-drama, and then they got the last episode, I would watch it with them. <laughs> and then for just, like, a good contemporary drama, I guess, I would say It's Okay, That's Love, which also has Do Kim Su in it. Um, I just love that drama. I think it's so good. It has so many important messages and it like didn't get boring at all. Um, I was like completely enamored the entire time with that drama and I thought it was just so, so good. Funny, I do think Do Kim Su is one of those people who He's actually like my favorite actor. Like everything he's ever been in, I love. Like I also am obsessed with his movie Young. I have watched that movie like five or six times and I cry every single time. <laughs> um, so I do love Do Kyung Soo in dramas so much. I'm a little biased though because I did love EXO. Like EXO were my ultimate group for a very long time. So um, yeah, I, I love it so much. It's so so I'd say if I had to make just one drama, I would say Goblin is my favorite drama. Alright, next up I'm wrapping this, which is- I can't open it. It's from Haley to me, so I'm just gonna wrap it, because I'm gonna open it on Christmas. <laughs> also, I'm realizing I might run out of wrapping paper. That sucks. I had a couple of- actually, I had a couple of people ask what my favorite movies are, because everyone knows my favorite books, but they were like, what's your favorite movies? Um, especially because I do not watch a lot of movies. I only very recently started really watching movies um, when I started dating my boyfriend. But, gosh, my favorite movies. I don't know. <laughs> I, was th I was talking about this with Nico last night that I was like, I don't know. Like, I guess it, like, they asked for like a top three. I would definitely say my top two are Parasite and Train to Busan. Um, I just love those movies so, so much. I've rewatched them so many times. Literally, Parasite came out this year in 2020, or like the very end of 2019, or whatever it was. And I have watched it like five times. <laughs> and I do not do that with movies. Like, Parasite was just so different, and I just loved it so much. Um, it was really strange for me. I've never really gotten that. And then Train to Busan, I have loved for so many years. I've rewatched it so many times. Um, and I just, I love Train to Busan. It's so good. It's not even like, I was trying to say this to Nico, it's like, it's not even like my favorite horror movie. It's just my favorite movie. Like, even if it wasn't in like the horror genre, like it would still be my favorite movie. Um, and then for my third favorite movie, I guess, maybe, like, Young, maybe? Actually, now that I just thought of that, that might work, but I'd say probably like my favorite Disney movie, which is um, Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm the only person who my favorite Disney movie is Emperor's New Groove. Uh, this is the worst wrapping job ever. This is the weirdest shaped thing ever. <laughs> wow, that might be my worst wrapping job. It was just so strangely shaped. 
God, someone said if there was a fire and you could only say which one book, which one would it be? Oh God, that's a hard one. I feel like the obvious answer is just my favorite book, which is Three Souls, but I like that book is like that physical book isn't super special to me. Um, like I've had it for a long time, but I would honestly probably have to say Imaginary Friend just because the paperback edition that I have, just because um, that is the most annotated book that I have ever done in my life. And I would never be able to get that back. Like even if I tried to recreate it and like completely annotate it again, I would never get back that, <laughs> those annotations. Especially because that was actually a buddy read that I did with Haley. So I actually put her like annotations into my book too because we were both kind of looking at different things when it came to like rereading that book so i would honestly probably say my paperback of imaginary friend so um someone asked for advice on starting booktube just do it um booktube honestly i feel like i don't even do booktube anymore i don't really watch booktube anymore i've gotten really sick of it and i've unfollowed <laughs> The majority of booktubers, I'd say I only follow about five at this point. Um, I just, I don't know, I'm a person who the second stuff starts getting like too dramatic and like clicky and annoying for me, I just kind of yeet myself out, <laughs> out of there. <laughs> so I would say if you want to talk about books online, just start doing it because it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, you should not be like looking at, I don't know, like books and Lala. And being like, oh, if I'm not friends with her, or if she doesn't notice me, or if I don't get to her amount of subscribers or views or whatever, I'm a failure. Like, no, just, it's books. It's not that deep. That's my biggest thing with booktube that bothers me, is we are literally here to talk about books. I don't know why people seem to get so, like, dramatic about books. Um, yeah, but with booktube, just literally use your phone camera that's literally what i've been doing for eight years and just do it just sit down and do it um i've never had a problem public speaking so i really don't have any tips to like help with um talking to a camera i just do it <laughs> so yeah i would say like everyone always says don't like obsess over get like buying equipment and stuff especially if you're still new to making videos it's just a waste of money if you go out and buy a ton of stuff to be able to do booktube also especially just gonna say it um do not spend money to make booktube videos because it's booktube like you're never going to blow up enough to like make a substantial amount of money like everyone that you see who's like a real booktuber like who has hundreds of thousands of um, subscribers, unless you get to like, who is it, like Peru's Project, who has like 300,000 followers. Like, she's probably making real money. Everyone else, like, no, they're probably not making as much money as you think they are. Money on YouTube is a lot less than people probably assume it is. So do not spend money to make YouTube videos because you're never going to get the money back. <laughs> oh, we have a visit from... The Scooby! I was just talking about him a little bit ago. Hi! He's in his Snoopy pajamas. You are so cute! Oh my gosh, you guys are with me? Will you help me wrap gifts? Look, you have gifts under there! Those are all yours! You are such a spoiled little boy! Okay, you guys are with me? want to answer some questions. Everyone wants to know how you're so cute! How'd you do it? Okay. This is another Scooby present. <laughs> Scoob, you got a lot of presents. Uh, actually, I'll talk about this one for a second. I got him this um, like car seat that is apparently really good for like small dogs who like really don't like the car. I saw it honestly in influencer made me buy it. Um, I saw it. Someone talking about it because she said how her dog like shakes in the car and Scooby shakes a lot. Like he gets really really nervous in the car. And I was like, huh, maybe I'll try it. So I bought it. There's my PSA about dog beds and car things. I think I'm gonna make this a Franken wrapping because I don't want to like not 
use this. So, I'm gonna wrap half in silver, half in red. Someone asked if I stink in Korean or Spanish ever. Um, if you guys didn't know, I am fluent in Spanish. I'm like proficient at Korean. Honestly, I'm not anymore. <laughs> to be completely honest, in 2021, I am planning on relearning Korean because I lost so much of it from not keeping it up when I went to my master's. I just kind of stopped after I stopped taking classes in undergrad. Back in the day, like when I was taking in, like intensive Korean classes, I would definitely every once in a while catch myself like thinking, not in Korean, but like thinking of how to translate something to Korean. Like I would see a sentence or see something and be like, oh, what would that be in Korean? And I'd like catch myself doing that, like just very subconsciously. But I'm pretty sure you don't like think in a language like fully unless you are native in that language or like completely fluent or like if I moved to Korea and like was speaking Korean there all the time. I think that's the only time that you really think in a language. <laughs> so yeah, no, I don't really think in Korean <laughs> or Spanish. Um, like some, again, sometimes I catch myself thinking about something kind of in one of those languages, but not really. So Dylan saw that all of the questions were book topics, so decided to ask me Rank your five favorite fast food chains and favorite food items from <laughs> that chain. Um, honestly, asking the important questions here. So, I don't actually eat that much fast food. I definitely, honestly, I've probably eaten more fast food in the last, like, year than I have in my life. <laughs> um, we just got super lazy during the pandemic. And also, yeah, my boyfriend really likes eating out, so we eat out a little bit more than I'm used to. Um, but honestly, we don't eat that much fast food. <laughs> like, if we're gonna go out and get food, we're just gonna get, like, real food. But I would say my favorite fast food is probably Chipotle. Um, because I don't feel super gross after eating it. Like, it just kind of feels like normal food to me. Um, so I'd say probably Chipotle is my favorite. And I always get a bowl. I always get a burrito bowl because I like to eat half when I first get it and then like save half for dinner, like cause we usually get it for lunch. So I love Chipotle. Um, and then I guess more traditional fast food. I really like McDonald's, like honestly basic, but I do just love McDonald's. I think their, you know, chicken, McChicken sandwiches are fantastic and they're like a dollar. <laughs> so I would usually probably go to McDonald's. I also love their fries the best. And then Wendy's, Nico loves Wendy's. So we go to Wendy's pretty often if we're like getting fast food together. And I'm obsessed with their lemonade. Their Wendy's natural lemonade or whatever is amazing. It is so like tart, but also sweet. It's so good. Like if you're a lemonade fan, definitely check it out. It's super good. All right, for my brother, I got him this colander. Um, it's like a standing colander. He like very specifically wanted a standing one. So I was like, okay, sure. Um, someone asked, how did you first get into K-pop? Any tips for learning Korean? So how did I get into K-pop? I got into K-pop from learning Korean. I started learning Korean back in my junior year of high school. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of hate it. <laughs> I kind of hate the fact that um, now, like, me knowing Korean immediately just tells everything, makes everyone think I'm, like, a Korea do, and I think it's annoying and gross, and I don't like it. <laughs> um, um, I used to be, like, really proud of being able to speak Korean, and, like, people thought it was really, really cool, and now I say I speak Korean, and people just immediately think I'm a Korea do. So I don't super, like, I'm not super confident in speaking Korean anymore because of that, and I don't, like, talk about it that much because of that, so... See, this is why you keep the scraps, because sometimes you just need a little bit extra. <laughs> but some tips to learning Korean. Uh, I feel like there are so many online resources nowadays, but I'm going to kind of go against that and say that I think, especially if you are a Western learner, you really need a, like, actual teacher. Like, you need someone who actually teaches you how to do things um, and not just, like, online textbooks or something, because the way you say stuff and the way everything is pronounced and like done is just so so different from english or like any germanic language 
that I feel like it's very difficult to learn for a English, German, Spanish speaking person. So my biggest tip for learning Korean would be to find a real teacher, like an in-person or, you know, <laughs> Zoom teacher, or someone who like, yeah, like does online Korean lessons. Um, and that you can actually really hear it and like, you know, ask questions and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's my biggest advice for learning Korean. And yeah, again, the way I got into K-pop was through learning Korean because a lot of my Korean textbooks and the things that I was learning using to learn Korean would mention K-pop a lot. Like it would be like, oh, you know, like Big Bang or like stuff like that. And from that, I just kind of got into Korean and like learning and like got into K-pop and stuff. Um, the first group I ever liked was BTS and I don't like them anymore. I find their fandom to be just too much for me and I don't super love their music anymore so it doesn't really make sense for me to like them. Um, but yeah, they are the first group that I really got into. Like one of their songs very like in particular kept getting um, talked about for a specific like grammar point. Oh my god you see that? Ah, oh, God. Yeah, one of their songs, like, kept getting used in, to, like, talk about a very specific grammar point, and I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been, like, Damon or something like that, and so I looked into them, and I thought that they were really fun and cute, so I got into them, and I only liked BTS for, like, a pretty short amount of time. Um, as I found other groups, I got into them instead and started liking them a lot better. I'd say when I first got into K-pop, my big groups were Infinite, EXO, and Block B. I absolutely loved Block B. I would actually have said Block B were my like ultimate group for quite a bit of time, which no one talks about Block B anymore. <laughs> so it's a little sad. Okay, I'm just gonna like half wrap this one, I guess. I'll finish wrapping it when I get more wrapping paper. <laughs> Last question, because I'm apparently done wrapping because <laughs> I don't have any more wrapping paper. Um, last question is, if you hadn't majored in English, what would you have studied? And I feel like a lot, I, my channel very much grew after I got into my master's. Like, it's been in the last, like, year, year and a half or so that I really gained a lot of following. But, um, I actually did not originally go into college for English. <laughs> I was actually originally in school for nutrition. So I guess if I hadn't switched to English, I would have just stayed in nutrition. <laughs> um, I actually really did love nutrition. It was just the fact that I'm really bad at math. <laughs> I'm really bad at math. And um, it was definitely affecting my grades. And I just honestly couldn't handle how math focused. Um, nutrition was because a lot of people don't realize nutrition you're basically with pre-meds and nursing majors for the majority of your degree so it's a lot it's a lot more intense science than people think it is I, I don't know I don't know why nutrition seems to be like this science that's not taken as seriously but I was in fact originally a nutrition major and before I decided on nutrition I was actually also looking into engineering um, and things with physics. I really loved physics. So um, I probably would honestly be in a science. My favorite classes in school besides English classes were physics and anatomy and physiology. Um, I probably wouldn't have been a kin major because I don't really care to um, be like a physical therapist or a personal trainer or something. But I did love anatomy and physiology. It was one of my favorite classes. So I probably would have been in the sciences, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I switched. I love English so much and it's just works so much better with my brain. But anyways, um, ending on that <laughs> stupid note. <laughs> this is so bad. Um, <laughs> also, I don't think like I said, this is for my dad and it's a bird feeder because he's obsessed with birds. I ran out of wrapping paper. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I didn't even get to wrap the giant present that's in here. But um, anyways, uh, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this cozy little sit down and chat and wrap some presents with me video. Um, but yeah, anyways, I love y'all and I'll see y'all soon. Have a good Christmas and happy Hanukkah 
to my Jewish followers, Hanukkah, I'm pretty sure, was quite a bit before this video is going to go up. It's currently happening as we speak. It's day five of Hanukkah. So, um, yeah. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and have a great holiday if you celebrate one and a good new year in a little while. Yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and I love y'all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!